Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the New York Giants 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. So in this video, we're essentially going to look at um, every single pick that the New York Giants made in terms of their draft class from an analytics perspective. So we're going to look at these players based on their production and based on their, their athleticism data to determine how successful they could be based on how other players in the past performed in these very same metrics. Uh, so again, if you're new to the channel and you're new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. And with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the picks of the Giants, which starting with pick number one, uh, the New York Giants selected Saquon Barkley running back out of Penn State. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 76.16 uh, total offensive market share production score, uh, which pretty much hits the five-time Pro Bowl threshold and three and uh, three-time Pro Bowl threshold in terms of his data doesn't quite hit the All-Pro threshold of 89 or higher. Um, the All-Pro threshold is essentially where you have the greatest of all times. You have Adrian Peterson. You have um, Le'Veon Bell is kind of in that area. Marshall Falk, uh, Barry Sanders. Um, uh, you know the list goes on. Walter Payton, um, even. Uh, you know, you just keep going through the, the Rolodex of like multiple all-pro running backs and all those guys typically performed 89 or higher. Barkley isn't quite in that area, but he does hit again above the five-time Pro Bowl threshold. And when you look at the average uh, production score for a Pro Bowl player and a starter player, he does hit at least above that area as well. Um, so Barkley, based on his production data, has a good chance to become a multiple Pro Bowl running back. When you look at him from a production standpoint, and when you look at his athleticism traits, he had a 99.13 explosive score and a 98.98 .98 speed score. Um, when it comes to running backs, every single multiple all pro such Pro Bowl running back since the 1999 NFL draft class had at least one, one 79 or higher athleticism trait. When it comes to Saquon Barkley, he had two, and both of them were 99, well, 99.13 and 98.98, .98, which is pretty much 99 percentile. Um, when it comes to his athleticism traits. So very athletic player, very high likelihood of becoming a multiple Pro Bowl running back. It's just very unlikely that he becomes a multiple All-Pro type when you look at him from a production standpoint. Then, of course, we get to Will Hernandez, offensive guard out of UTEP. When you get to his athleticism traits, he had a 67.39 explosive lower body strength score, 96.23 speed, speed score, and 98.03 flexibility score. Uh, pretty much hits all the, the athleticism traits of a multiple All-Pro, multiple Pro Bowl offensive guard. And when you look at the averages of the position, pretty much looks close to the All-Pro averages and Pro Bowl averages. So when it comes to Will Hernandez, you're looking at a guy that has a chance to become a multiple All-Pro Pro Bowl guard. And based on data, was the second best testing guard in this draft class. Only second to Quentin Nelson. So in many ways, you got one of the better running backs in the draft class and you also got a top five guard in this draft class as well so very good first two picks for the giants then you get to lorenzo carter edge out of georgia uh, when you look at his production data he had a 62.64 solo tackle score 32.45 sack score and 31.47 tackle for loss score does not quite hit all the thresholds in terms of all pro potential and probable potential uh, and doesn't really even hit near the all-pro averages in terms of his solo tackle data, sack data, or TFL data. So production is the major question mark with Carter. Um, his athleticism testing is pretty impressive, though. 76.25 in terms of explosiveness, 95.34 in terms of speed, and unfortunately did not do any flexibility testing to determine how flexible he is for his size. So didn't do the short shell, didn't do the three cone, um, which is troubling, to say the least, because you do want to know that information since it's so important in terms of projection. Um, Lorenzo Carter is a guy that has been compared to, to Jamie Collins by some, and even though there are some similarities in terms of having above average athleticism traits, I think when you look at the production data, this is where things are a little bit different. Uh, Lorenzo Carter looks more similar to CJ IU than he does Jamie Collins. When you look at it from a production standpoint and an athleticism standpoint, CJ IU is a little bit closer to what Lorenzo Carter was. So, Lorenzo Zaccardo is kind of one of the, I don't want to say dud, but definitely a guy that has a very unlikelihood of becoming a multiple all-pro slash pro bowl edge rusher, and even less likely to become a long-term starter just because of how poor his production data is. Then, of course, we get to B.J. Hill, defensive tackle out of North Carolina State. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 48.74 in terms of solo tackle data, 35.21 in terms of sack data, and 16.93 in terms of tackle for loss data. 
doesn't quite hit the All-Pro thresholds or the Pro Bowl thresholds in terms of his data, but does hit at least the starter threshold in terms of his production data. But when you look at the averages, this is where things get into better perspective for you. The average All-Pro score is pretty high. The average Pro Bowl score is even higher. And even the average starting score is high as well. So when you look at B.J. Hill, you're looking at a guy that is just really, really below average in terms of his production data. But does have some positives in, ter positives in terms of his athleticism traits, 33.02 in terms of explosiveness, 87.21 in terms of speed, and 96.31 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't quite have all pro slash pro bowl athleticism traits because of his explosion, but does have starter threshold traits. So when you look at B.J. Hill, you're looking at a guy where I think the Giants are kind of betting on his athleticism traits to win the day versus his production. But either way, very unlikely he becomes all pro slash pro bowl defensive tackle, but could become a long-term starter based on his production and based on his athleticism traits. Then, of course, you get to Kyle Oletta, quarterback out of Richmond. Uh, the only thing I can say about Kyle Oletta is I do not do a lot of data into FCS or low-level division quarterbacks. Most of my data is looking at quarterbacks from the FBS level. And because of that, I really don't have much to say about Kyle Oletta uh, other than what anybody else says about him. So I would say go to a guy who watches film to get a better perspective on him. Uh, but when it comes to data, there just isn't a lot of information out there about Loletta. There isn't even really high school data available for Kyle Loletta. So um, I would just say this is someone I'm just not going to be able to say much about because there just isn't a lot of information about him. Then lastly, we get to RJ McIntosh, defense stack out of Miami, Florida. We look at his production data. He had a 68.68 solo tackle score, 29.18 uh, sack score, and 71.11 flexibility score. Um, doesn't hit the all pro search pro bowl thresholds in terms of his overall production data, but does hit at least the starter thresholds. When you look at the averages at the position, similar issue to BJ Hill, where below the he's below the all pro average, below the pro bowl average, and below the starter average. But other than Hill, this is a guy that just doesn't have athletic upside. Uh, 4.68 explosive score, 22.95 speed score, and 5.35 flexibility score. There's never been a long term starting defensive tackle with RJ McIntosh's athleticism traits, nor the combination of production and athleticism. And because of that, I would say that RJ McIntosh is one of the defense, is one of the players in this draft class where I think it's very unlikely that he becomes anything um, but a guy that becomes out of the NFL in about three to four years. Um, so we'll see what happens. I don't like to project guys to that level of like they're going to be a bust. Um, but he is a guy that just based on his athleticism traits and based on his production data, very unlikely he becomes anything at the NFL level. So overall, when you look at the New York Giants draft class, I think it was a good start to the class. I think Barclay has a very good chance to become a Pro Bowl running back. I think Will Hernandez has a very good chance to become a Pro Bowl such all-pro guard. I think Carter likely won't be the most successful. Um, definitely has athleticism traits. We'll see what happens with him, but his production is pretty low. B.J. Hill probably won't end up becoming a high quality defensive tackle but has a very good chance to become a, a really good one at least a starter because of his athleticism traits so i think there is that shot that bj hill could potentially become like a long-term starter kyle Aletta, don't really have much to say about him other than he's a quarterback and maybe he becomes something um and rj mcintosh is the one guy in this class where it's pretty much dead on arrival, Not no athleticism upside, no production upside, just very unlikely he becomes much at the NFL level. So overall, not a terrible draft class by any stretch of the imagination, um, but definitely only about one, two, maybe three players that I feel very strongly about will become successful outcomes at the NFL level. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gymmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace!